What's up everybody? My name is Russ with RWGResearch.com. Here we are. So I'd like to make an update video of everything I've been working on for about the last six years. I have a fairly decent sized list. This video is going to last quite a while. I'll try to put the chapters in the description so at least you can skip to the parts you'd like to see, but honestly I would just watch the whole thing because I'm going to tell you a bunch of information in this video which I've been kind of waiting hanging on to to share with you for quite a few years. And here it is. So the very first thing that I'd like to say, by the way this is the second time I'm recording this video so if I don't sound as enthusiastic it's because I already did this once and I ran out of memory on my car but my camera didn't tell me, it drove me nuts. Here we go, you guys ready? Okay, first things first. Um, I have, a lot to, I have a lot to talk about, so I'm going to start with the newest things and then work my way to sort of some of the older, the older stuff. But one of the things I'd like to tell you guys about is um, I'm doing this thing which I think you guys are going to be like, are you serious, Russ? You're going to be doing that? I'm like, yes. So there's this, this YouTube channel which some of you probably know about. It's called Ghost Town Living, right? And uh, it's Brent, and he bought a... Ghost Town on the Cerigardo, Cerigardo Mines, Silver Mines, over in uh, California. Well, recently, over the last two years, this guy actually created this thing called a foot race, where you race up the mountain. All right. Now, I looked at that foot race two years ago and thought that would be pretty freaking awesome to do, but I'm in no way, shape, capable of doing that. That's a serious feat. It's almost eight miles long, and it's almost, or right at, one mile in elevation. So it's like 5,400 foot vertical elevation, and it's eight miles long, which is a grade of about 11% the entire way. That's a serious hike, walk, doesn't matter who's doing it, that's no joke. It's a full-blown mountain. That's a, one of the biggest mountains you can find around here, and that one's in California. So, over the last while, um, oh, since I was born, I've had back pains, okay? So, over the last eight months, I've been feeling a lot better with my back pain. I prayed about it and asked God to heal it, and He did. He seriously healed that thing, and it's been amazing. Because for about a year prior to that, I've had woke up with chronic back pain to the point where I almost couldn't walk. Just something you deal with in life. I don't talk about it, but it's a thing that's uh, that I have, and my... Mom birthed me breech, which means I came out butt first, bent in half. I really do believe my back was messed up since I've been a kid, because as long as I can remember, I've had back problems. Anyway, not really her fault, but that's what happened. Uh, she was probably in more pain than me, but I get to live with it the rest of my life. She just had it temporarily. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Anyway, so recently I've been sitting in a chair a lot because I do a lot of engineering work. I sit at work a lot and work on the computer doing engineering and I do a lot here at my house and work on the computer and do engineering. My hips started bothering me um, and I've had the bands in your legs, I forgot what it was called, um, but the band in your leg can pop against the like stuff in your leg and really really cause you pain. I thought I had a hip thing that I needed to replace but it was actually a band. So I've been doing exercises and healed that thing, it got really well, and then I stopped doing those because I got lazy. Um, and I just, I didn't like doing them anyway, so once I start feeling better, I went, ah, it'll be fine. It wasn't, it came back. And so right around that time, this was about a month ago, I watched the video of the second annual foot race. Alright, if you don't know what I'm talking about, get on YouTube and look up Ghost Town Living, foot race up Cerigardo's Deadly Road. Okay. It's no joke, this thing is serious. And I saw that video and I thought, oh man, this is the second annual one that just happened. And I, the, like, right after I got done watching that video, I, t I text my sister and I said, hey, you want to do this with me? I'll do it if you do it. And she responded after a while and she said, I think it's feasible. And I went, oh, okay, so here we go, so we're going to do it? So. She said, yeah, I think we can do it. Okay, so I asked her, I said, if you make me a... Um, she's, by the way, she's run marathons and things before, uh, so she knows how to train for such a thing and kind of what to look for and how to work your way towards doing such a thing. So she went on chat, chat GPT of all places and created a actual, um, an entire thing, right, so that we could, uh, a training 
training, uh, follow a training schedule. So it, this training schedule is really intense. I mean, like really intense. Basically, you start out slow, you gradually go up really to a high intense point, and then you bring it back down and kind of flat flat line it right before the event so that you have all the endurance you need to get where you need to go. So like this last month, I've been running, walking, hiking, exercising, doing body workouts, which is not my normal thing. But honestly, it's been very beneficial. I think it's great for anyone to get out and do some cardio and just do something because sitting around a lot is a really bad deal. I feel a lot better, honestly. But here's my thing. I was thinking about making a documentary sort of video every week, a short snippet of like how I feel this week or how I'm doing or, you know, to encourage you guys to do it with me. Uh, just do some of the training or get out and do stuff and keep keep me in check, keep you in check, which is why I'm doing it with my sister. So if you want me to make YouTube content about how that is and then the actual race, please let me know down, down in the comments. Anyway, so my sister um, created this thing and was like, we should, we should ask my other sister to join us. So I did. I reached out and said, hey, you want to join us? She said, I'll train with you, but I don't know if I'll be able to make the event. I'm like, okay, cool. So it's me and my sisters, you know, we don't really even talk to each other very much, honestly, because they're in Indiana, and she's in, one of them's in Kentucky, and then I'm here, and so this is a cool way to sort of hold each other accountable for this. So that's what I'm going to be doing next year. The race is on May 24th, and it is going to be pretty intense. Yeah, go watch the video, you'll see how intense this is. 11% grade over a mile in altitude gain that's 5400 feet or so luckily the peak is about eight eight thousand something feet so it's not like you're up in the 12 and like even higher because then you get oxygen problems anyway long long story that's gonna be fun let me know if you want me to document it down in the comments the next thing I want to talk to you guys about is what I've been doing for about the last four and a half years or so um, so um, there's more to the story that I am not quite ready to fully entail, but along the way of moving here, I got a job where um, one of the people I knew, knew one of the persons I know, and I went into them and I said, hey, you got something I can do. I need to start a new job, so here we are. The guy said, yeah, you can build me a target retrieval system for our ranges we build. And I'm like, okay, I could probably figure that out. Um, they build shooting ranges out of shipping containers, right? This company does. It's really cool. But they don't have their own target retrieval system, so I volunteered to work full-time to work on that. I figured it would take me over a year, try to get it done in a year, and see where we go. Like, prototyping phase was my hope. What I didn't know is what I was going to learn about manufacturing, manufacturability, and how to do all the things, and it got pretty intense. So over the last six and a half years, I have successfully succeeded in that. And there's more to talk about. I'll show. I'll talk about it just here in a second. But what I want to show you is this thing hanging back here. This is our brochure. All right. You can go look it up. But here's the cool part. Um, although I don't own any ownership on this, they were kind enough to give me first name on the patent, which I think is great. You can go look up this patent for yourself. So the patent is actually really funny. It's I didn't write the patent. It's information that's been um, information that's been put together and just collaborated. And we literally like had somebody write that patent and slap it together in literally like two days or something. It was just get that thing documented before we went public. Is what it was all about, and that's what we did. So go check that out. That's what I've been working on for a very long time, and. Um, during that whole project, there's a gentleman, his name is Matt Watts. Matt, if you're still out there watching, get a hold of me. I still consider you one of my best friends. Long story there, can talk more about it if I need to later, but ultimately, Matt, I asked him, I'll take this opportunity and do this job if you'll help me with some of the software on the side. So along the way, um, he volunteered to help me. And I'm super grateful for that. Uh, Matt has always been one of those characters where he's always been... I still haven't replaced the battery in that. Matt's always been one of those characters where he's always been pushing me to do new things and encouraged me to just try it, don't be shy to try things. And uh, I really look up to Matt. Unfortunately, along the way, um, he got sick and for 
a few years, I figured that he was no longer on this earth with us, which was super heartbreaking. One of the hard, one of the, I consider Matt one of my best friends, and it's been one of the hardest things to go through for me personally, because I've never really lost a really good friend like that. Um, I do believe he's still around, and if you are Matt, please reach back out, because I would love our friendship back. There were some things that happened that pushed us around in circles, and a lot of it wasn't my fault, and ultimately, I haven't heard from him in a long time. I need to reach out to him, but if you hear this, let me know. Reach out to me. You know where to find me. So, along the way, when that happened, um, that was about, I don't know, six months into the project. Another friend of mine, Richard, you guys know Richard, um, he wrapped a big giant coil, right? He actually uh, stepped in and I asked him to help me because he does some software things. He knows a little bit more of that. So he helped me with the embedded side. So between those two, they um, encouraged me to learn how to program. They encouraged me to learn how to use Linux and all the things that I'm terrified of because I don't really enjoy the software side of the whole world, but I realized with my projects, you need to do both. So I taught myself how to program, taught myself how to write iOS apps for an iPhone and iPad, and that's where I was doing projects with the Zero, right? And I wrote the app, right, that had all the information displayed on it and the beagle bone that talked to it. That was like my way of teaching myself outside of work hours how to do the project at work. So that's what I did. And that was sort of where all those videos kind of came into play and when I was trying to learn how to do that. So that project is technically complete per se, even though um, there's so much to that story that I could dive into but I won't get too technical here, but basically I reinvented that thing about four times. And Richard and I had to rewrite software for that thing about four times. And now we have a sister company because our, our other company got purchased um, and they're kind of doing that and kind of taking over that embedded software and hardware part of the project. The hardware stayed the same, but the electronics changed. But I mean, we did, I personally did all the mechanicals, all the PCBs, Richard did the software and uh, together we successfully succeeded. We have these products out in the field and they've been working great. So I still got tons of projects to do with that company but that's what's been going on. I can share it with you because we have a patent and you can see the brochure. You can go look them up online and check it out. There's probably some videos somewhere of what it is and how it works but I don't know how in depth. There's more going on in there that I can't talk about because it's, I mean they own it. Um, but along the way, we purchased a CNC machine. Uh, I talked my boss into buying a CNC machine so we could make parts. Here's one of those original parts. This is actually a door handle. It's shaped like a bullet, right? So it's literally a door handle. All right, so this is a two axis or three axis part. But we had a turret installed on this machine and I taught myself how to program five axis parts. This is actually the third part I've ever machined on that, and it's a five axis part, which I think is pretty incredible. So this is a uh, 3D printed version, and here's the CNC version. So basically this was clamped, CNC'd, five axis, right? I was gonna make videos about that. I have some videos, but I never did publish them because it's technically I don't own it. You know what I mean? So I can't really do that. But here's the handles, uh, and then this is just tabs so you can break it off. So I taught myself how to CNC machine. Uh, over that time period. Now that's important for the next couple of conversations. But that's what I've been doing there and it took me almost five years to complete that goal because we had a pandemic, we had sh chip shortage, we had to keep changing the hardware. We built prototypes and couldn't get the things we needed. It was an absolute nightmare. What's going on out there? It, anyway, apparently it's really funny. So. In about five years, we finally accomplished that goal after many iterations, and now we're doing another iteration, but luckily the sister company's taking it over. But that's what I've been working on behind the scenes. Didn't tell anybody, but it took all of my brain power, which is why I, I didn't, I haven't been doing so many of my personal projects. It just takes a lot of effort. You do that all day long, and you don't want to come home and do it more. Your brain needs a break. So I haven't been able to do my personal projects, you know, like that one up there right there but I did get into RC stuff as you guys know and I did that because my daughter encouraged me and my kids enjoy it and we did that together I'll talk about that later too so um, side projects what I've been doing on the side so maybe 
Some of you know this, maybe some of you don't, but I gave some hints along the way. So I'm just going to point it out right now. One of my uh, YouTube fellow friends and another YouTube um, person that knew me at the time got together and created uh, this thing called Kairospace. Okay, so what is Kairospace? Well, funny enough, I haven't really hidden anything from you guys, but Kairospace has been sort of in the background for a while. Two and a half years now or something. Right there, that paper right there has been hanging right there where that one is right now for a long time. You can see it in all my old videos. It's just been back there. But go check out Cairo Space. Okay? K-A-I-R-O Space. Google it. There's stuff out there. We've been doing stuff. I'll let you go dig into what we're doing, but it's water-related research. Some of you probably have seen these, like, pipes over here. Right? Like, what is this pipe? There's a pipe over there. What is that pipe going under my bench? What is this stainless tray over here? And there's a water tank outside and all kinds of stuff. That's because we did most of the develop of the hardware in-house here at my house. So it's a startup company and I've been granted some of the ownership and that's been wonderful. So that's been on the side. So I've been engineering all day then I come home and engineer at night. Now you see why I haven't been working on all my personal projects. And wait, there's more. Okay, in the last uh, six months, one of my friends who owns a company that's actually part joint company with um, Cairo Space, they, they, we did a collaboration, basically um, give, has given me the opportunity, this other individual has given me the opportunity to start a CNC business with him. 50-50 ownership. And I'm like, that's pretty amazing. He's got two old VFOE Haas milling machines. They're 24 years old. Uh, they're probably 25 years old now and I spent a good four and a half months getting this one machine cleaned up um, the guy before me kind of destroyed it cleaned it up got it running checking some tolerance doing some maintenance on this machine and got it running so I am doing that outside of all the other tasks that I have going on and that's pretty awesome that's a, a super big blessing and I've been doing that most of the time I've been doing that on Sundays. I've just been dedicating a full day to it. Saturday's my Sabbath day. I try not to do a whole lot that day. We go to church that day. Um, then my wife volunteers at work or at um, at church on Sunday, so she drops me off at that location, and I do work all day long. Try to cut parts, make things, get the machines up and running, whatever I need to do. And then that's the physical time at there at space. Uh, on location and then like throughout the week I'll like prepare g-code and make make uh, parts uh, draw up parts in the computer whatever I got to do it's a ton of work but for me it's an investment of time and effort nobody's paying me right now it's just an investment of a startup and once we start getting jobs and start doing stuff it's gonna be awesome I'm really excited about it but at the end of the day um, these are all or most of the reasons over the last few years why I haven't been able to like do my personal projects because it takes a lot out of me. So for fun, I've been doing RC. And I have a lot to say about that as well. Um, one of the things I want to talk about with the RC side of the world is there's a video I, I filmed. I have over 300 gigabytes of footage with multiple cameras, multiple things of that airplane right there with the uh, hatch pattern on it. It's a super sportster that actually has a pitot tube. You can see I have a pitot tube and a pitot tube cover on it. Come on camera, you got this. This camera has been kind of acting weird for a while, but you see the do not, or the remove before flight flag? Right there. Anyway, that plane is fully autonomous, fully capable of doing full startup, full takeoff, full landing, full pattern, all by itself. So, me and a friend here in town who uh, has moved, we actually decided that we were going to put the camera over here in case the kids are really loud. We decided, um, well, I call, I, I met him at the fly field and I told him, I said, hey, I have an air, I have an airframe. I bought it for five dollars, which is that airframe. It's 20, 20, like 20 years old or something like that. Uh, and I said, hey, hey, don't be so loud. I'm filming a film. Anyway, so, I told him, I said, hey, I got an airplane, I've got a flight controller, um, I want to teach you how to do it because he was interested in the autonomous flying part of the stuff. He works actually uh, as a helicopter um, 
at the at the at the air base here in town. He works on helicopters and does stuff with the helicopters and goes flying. It's pretty awesome. So he's interested in flight and stuff. And I said, hey, I got this. I've got parts, but I don't have time. He's like, well, I have time and uh, a little bit of money on the side where I can put in some things if we don't have it. And so together, we built this aircraft. We had tons of problems. But I filmed 300 gigabytes of footage. I've edited two or three videos, and then I stopped because it's overwhelming amount of footage to edit. So, I'm putting a request out there on my list right here. Does anyone want to edit videos? Unfortunately, I can't pay you. I don't really make any money from these videos. These are just things I want to share with people. But if anyone's out there willing to take all my raw footage, edit it into a video, I can do a voiceover, I can do the final edit, I just need like everything put into Adobe Premiere Pro and like so that we can get it from there and edit it down. I opened up my computer uh, maybe six, six months ago and realized I have about like 20 videos filmed that are all in folders inside of Adobe that just need to be edited and I don't have time. So if anyone's out there willing to just sitting around doing nothing playing video games and you want to edit some of my videos, do tell because I would be very happy if you would let me do that. Let me let you do that. Okay, so let me know. Maybe no one cares at all, but I haven't been posting videos purely because I haven't been able to sit down and edit them. I've been really busy. Um, there's been another thing. So uh, I will put a link in the description to a service, a church service, where me and my wife got on stage and spoke about this. Um, but, you know, me and my wife, uh, we believe in tithing, we believe in giving back, we believe that, you know, everything we've been given is a gift and we should be able to give that back. And the more you are responsible with, with what you've been given, it doesn't have to be financially, financially, just whatever it is. If you're obedient with what you have, you'll be given more. And we've been really obedient. We've always tried to be that way. But recently we've been given a full 10%, which is a big deal for us, um, because we felt that's what God's tugging on our hearts to do. Um, and so we have been. And when I did that, the opportunity for in the CNC came up. Um, I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that things are meant to happen because of the reasons, um, for me, very faith-driven reasons. Um, if you're if you're obedient with what you have, you'll be given more. I really believe that. My whole life's been that way. I've had a, a blessings ever since uh, living in that lifestyle. So along the way, I've been looking for an electric vehicle or a vehicle to turn into electric to drive it to work and back. Basically, what I did with the zero motorcycle here, right? Same thing, the zero motorcycle. Same thing, I was trying to turn a car into that because when it is 120 degrees here in Las Vegas, just driving that 20 minutes from work and back practically kills me, it's so hot. So I was trying to find something that I could have air conditioning in and I was once going to purchase a car, actually it was a Chevy Love which I've been looking for for years and years and years. I have not ever found a Chevy Love for any reasonable price to chop up and make an electric car. but. I found one and my wife said that's a terrible idea because it was in pretty bad shape, but it was only like 800 bucks. I'm like, it's 800 bucks? She's like, no, terrible idea. I'm like, okay, so I didn't do that. And right after we started doing all this tithing and stuff, this this guy that I know offered me to work with this CNC business uh, and start it up. It's like, he basically said, I'm either gonna get rid of the machines that I, that I have or you can take 50% ownership and do it. And I'm like, okay. Um, and this was like right after we started doing 10%. So I personally believe these things don't happen randomly. But the reason I'm telling you all this is because he actually acquired a Nissan Leaf about eight months ago, and then he bought an ID3 to replace it because it, the battery's pretty rough on it. And he actually gave me the Nissan Leaf. So the Nissan Leaf is sitting outside, and I've been driving it every day to work for the whole summer, and it's got just enough battery range to get me there and back. It's about 50% state of health, it's pretty bad, but it gets me the short distance I need to get to work and back. So me and the kids put a uh, 
a sound system in it because I had stuff lying around. I had some old speakers. Uh, I had uh, an old amplifier and we modified the head unit to be able to basically put a sub in there and I teach my kids about that because they love their audio. They've been doing all kinds of stuff with audio. So that's something I've been doing. Um, and yeah, I mean, I've been doing a lot, but I haven't been doing a lot with videos and my own personal research purely because I've been exhausted. I've learned over the last seven years to invest your time and your effort into something that will invest back into you. So I have Cairo Space, which is a thing that I've invested a lot of time in. About a year's worth of really hard work and effort invested into that. And I have a part ownership in that, which is fantastic because if that takes off and grows, great. And I'm still doing some work on the side here and there. Um, not as much full time now because we're just we're a startup. We're just struggling to get by, but it's gonna it's gonna turn around. Um, Jeremy over there has been pushing hard, and Juan's been working hard, and we together have been working hard on getting that done. CNC business, same thing. I'm investing time for free, not getting paid a dime, but all that energy and effort will reward itself later once we start rolling and get stuff going. I think you can make a great CNC business in America. Tons of work out there, tons of profit to be made. I'm gonna invest it back into that place, get it going so in 20 years from now, when I'd like to retire and do something else, I can do that. That's like the ultimate goal, right? Invest in something that will invest back into you and it'll just keep bringing in income or bringing in whatever it may bring in to help you. Um, so that's my ultimate like perspective recently and been trying to figure that out and work through that. So that's what I've been doing. Um, I'll give you a two second shop tour while, while we're in here. I've got the automated RC jet. This guy which landed in here a long time ago, you guys know about one of the first airplanes that's been in here. I think I can get this going now. I have things for that. Some other new airplanes that have been gifted to me or repaired. This was bro broken and given to me. That was broken and given to me. This was made out of parts that was broke. Riley's airplane that we built together. This one was a joint project. That one was given to me. Um, that one I actually paid a couple bucks for. It wasn't very much. It was at a swap meet. But that's one of the planes I want to learn how to do my 3D aerobatics. Which I'm getting pretty good at. That's a $5 airplane. Uh, most of those up there came in a lot of airplanes I picked up for like... I think I picked up like eight airplanes for a hundred bucks two and a half years ago and I've been you know selling them crashing them building them so made my money back and kept some airplanes by selling some of them um, this guy that guy that's a broken one I found in the trash this one uh, this one this giant 32% scale is actually one that I um, traded for. I rewrapped a biplane and traded an, air, uh, an airplane for this one. It's got all the servos in it. It's got like two grand worth of servos in it. No motor. The cowling is up there. I do have the whole thing. But my idea is to make this electric. But that's really expensive, so maybe one day. You've got the Stuka in the top, which is gas. I just recently crashed another gas airplane that was gifted to me. It was a bad day. Uh, here's what's left of it. Literally, if you want to see that video, it's catastrophically terrible. Another gifted airplane. This is one that uh, isn't mine. It's being worked on. Elijah's working on it for for someone else. Airplane, airplane. Air There's too many airplanes in here. Okay, I just got a lot of airplanes. But a lot of these have full autonomy, and most of these I didn't pay much for, hardly anything, or traded something for them because I don't have money to buy this stuff or this hobby. But I'm having a lot of fun. Oh yeah, check this out. See all these quadcopters? Look at all these things. So this is the very first one I owned and I broke the arm off of it learning how to fly. And then I couldn't find parts for very cheap because this stuff can get very expensive very fast. So what I actually decided to do is I said, you know what, I'm going to keep watching online until I find somebody that has a whole bunch of these things for a couple hundred bucks, buy them and then sell as many as I need to sell in order to make up the amount that I bought them for and come out even, right? That's my plan. It's always my plan when I buy any RC stuff, if I pay cash for them. I just sell things until I get my money back. And you believe it or not, in uh, the local apps and stuff, it's pretty easy to do. Um, so, I bought, I didn't buy, I traded. I went around my shop, found some old amplifiers, found some old stuff that I didn't need, 
and I literally traded a guy about $2,000 worth of random equipment, things and stuff that I just didn't need for all of these. So he traded me. And so I've been fixing these slowly one at a time. I think I've only fixed five or six of these. And I've taken a flight controller out of one to put in the jet and recycled parts and transmitters and receivers and all kinds of stuff. There's like literally $6,000 worth of equipment sitting here that I traded a guy some stuff that I just needed to get rid of for. That's the way I roll. People are like, how do you afford this hobby and buy stuff? And like, you don't. I don't. I can't. I literally just trade stuff. There's the CNC prop. Uh, prop maker. Uh, this Cessna is actually fully autonomous. That's part of the video that we never got. That uh, I actually demoed at one of the 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 cool uh, events here with RC Hobby stuff. That was pretty fun to show people get that thing in the air and just let it fly. The plan was to get the fully autonomous airplane there, and the day before the event we crashed it. It actually crashed itself from a software bug. That's that one up there. So instead I brought that one. And again, that's that 300 gigabyte worth of footage I have. I don't have time. I don't have time to edit this stuff. I just don't have time. So anyway, there's your overview. So a few takeaways from this video. Watch out for the Gordo run video next year. That's gonna be awesome. And let me know if you want like weekly snippets, even like shorts, something quick, just to say how my week was for training, how I feel if I'm motivated or demotivated, and you guys can encourage me to keep going, because honestly, I'm gonna need that. It's a lot of work. Um, the target retrieval system stuff that I've been working on, been a long project. There's so much more details there, but I don't technically own that, so I can't go into crazy details. I can't even show you the hardware and stuff because they own it. I probably could, nobody would yell at me, but I'd rather not, I really don't wanna get in trouble for that. Cairo Space, that's been a huge startup project. It's been pretty fun. Um, kind of took a little break there for a little bit because funding was like non-existent and so now we're just getting by the bottom barrel and we're we're making it we're getting there it's gonna be awesome the CNC business that's gonna be fun but that's sort of a brand new adventure for me and I'm I'm working on it uh, the Leafs been a cool project because um, I've actually been trying to figure out a way to put new batteries in there or stuff like that so there's a pretty cool app it's called Leaf Spy and it actually shows you like the battery, the battery percentage, all the cells. Um, it's got like a whole really cool like interactive sort of thing that you can see. You can change settings on here. So this is called Leaf Spy. It's pretty cool. Um, but I've been learning how to play with that car. It's been really fun to learn how to play with that car. It's a 2015 and it's still kicking. The RC uh, related stuff that I've been doing. There's a lot of stuff posted on the live channel over there if you want to see it. And I need a video editor. I need somebody that's willing to edit videos just because they enjoy what I do or they want to see more of what I do and what I actually edit out of my videos. I don't know. Anyway, peace and love. God bless. Have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for the support that you all have given me over the years. And one day, I will get back to my other projects. I literally have tons, when I say tons, I mean tons of projects and tons of things to do. There is, in those boxes right there, that tremendous amount of 30 gauge wire that's gonna be going into the Newman motor that I still yet to put together and build because I haven't had time. A lot of people ask me, hey, are you ever gonna do that again? The answer is, I'm still super encouraged to do those things, but I don't have the time because I'm trying to invest in things that are gonna invest back into me and I can play with those things once we get to a state where I can have something run itself, have some income and be able to actually enjoy what I, what I do on those projects. So, very, very still interested. Unfortunately, everything's been set aside temporarily all of it's still here. It still lives in all these boxes behind me. And we will get to it eventually. But I gotta live life. I gotta spend time with my family, spend time with my kids, cherish them while they're here, start growing these businesses so I can have some re reoccurring income for the future, so I can put my time and effort into another place and not have to worry about working my entire life until I die. But hey, one word of encouragement, do what your heart desires. If you're enjoying it and you're having fun with it, then that's what you should be doing.
and personally I'm chasing the things that I enjoy that I want to do and I'm just recording making videos along the way so you can watch me as I go with RC stuff um, the CNC business thing I can share that with you guys I can share those adventures and how it's going um, the Cairo space stuff there's a lot of videos online and, and things going on and a lot of papers being written and third-party validations you guys can go look that stuff up and um, that's all I got thanks for watching leave me a comment let me know what you think it's a pretty long video but I wanted to get through all the information I'm probably missing some and there is more to the story before that that I'm not quite ready to share with you guys there's just a lot of details in there that put me and got me where I am so bye God bless read the Bible more as always later oh yeah and one more thing I made that video about me in a really bad place a while back and all I can say is I'm feeling better um, life is still always a struggle but it's your perspective on it that can change the way that you're feeling most people think they're they're having a terrible life or something like that but sometimes you gotta look in the mirror and ask yourself how you can change it and for me it was realizing some things I didn't realize looking at it from a third party perspective and just making choices to make to, to it was a different viewpoint on the things I couldn't control that I thought were in my control which were basically causing all of my grief and trouble there's some things you can control in life but most of the things are outside of your control and you can't worry about those things you just need to let those let God handle those things you can't control control the things you can and look at all the good things that happen in your life instead of dwelling on all the bad so it's taken me it's taken me a while but honestly I am feeling a lot better and um, just thought I'd share that with you at the end of this video so life is what you make it the perspective that you have will change your outcome make it a good one later <laughs>